So now let's get this out of gravity sketch and into Blender and back into Tilt Brush. In Tilt Brush we can add an extra flare on top of it, which is pretty fun. So to do all this we need to go to the three lines and I say export and I have slightly different settings because I'm in the studio version, but you have the features you need to do this. So you just need to go to object, make sure you're doing single sided and say render um, and instead of mesh and then make sure your model unit is still M, but all of that should be there by default. So now we just say export. We'll call it my tree four. Before we can bring this into Blender, we just need to extract our file. So here we can see our my tree four. So we just need to extract the file from the compressed folder. And now it's in its own folder. So let's start going to uh, Blender. So in Blender, we'll just say general, we'll delete the default cube. And then go to File, Import, and we will import our OBJ. So we just go to Gravity Sketch, Export Sketches, and there it is at the top. So we just say OBJ and then Import. And now we have our tree in our scene, and it works beautifully. So there's a couple of weird quirks about importing in from Gravity Sketch, and we're going to tackle them slowly. First off, this is one big object right now. It's all merged together, but we can still separate it later on. The next thing, if I press tab and then A to select our verts, or I didn't need to press A, if I select one of the verts and then I press G to grab it, we can see that these aren't actually merged together. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we need to merge all of our verts in the scene. So to do this, we're just going to press A to select all of them. We can go to vertex and then just say merge vertices by distance. And down here, you can see that 7,000 vertices were um, destroyed in that process. We can click this down here to see how much it's merging the distance by, and it's this super small number. If you had this set to like 0.1, all your, mer your vertices would collapse on themselves. So make sure that it's set this low. So now if I can test it out. I can grab one of my vertices, press G to move it, and it's all in place. So if you want to separate these now, we can press P and it gives us the option to separate and I'll say by loose parts, which means anything that's not actually physically connected to each other. So now if I select away from this, we can select all of our individual objects in the scene. Now the other quirk is that it's hard to tell how back face calling works in Gravity Sketch, so which way our faces are actually facing. If I go over here to the small tab, I can go down to activate back face calling, and hopefully it's not too bad. That's ah, all right. So when we look around the scene, it looks like everything was reversed but the tree itself. And we have all these tree objects up here, so we're just going to go down and select everything but the tree. And then we can press tab, which goes into edit mode, and press A to select all of them. And then if we press alt N, we get our normal settings and we'll just flip our normals. And now everything is set up right. So I can press tab again to get out of that mode. And now we have our fixed scene. So this we could bring into the tilt brush and it would work just fine. You'll notice that everything is super smooth, which looks great on some objects, but on the rock, we may not want this smooth. So we can just right click and say shade flat. And now we get back to that nice rock look. So shade flat on that too. I think I'm going to uh, keep the shading on the rest of the objects though, because those look all great. So let's take a moment to compare our tilt brush model to our gravity sketch model. So this is our tilt brush model. If we look down here, we can see our vert count is at 11,000, which isn't too high. And it's only got there because I was able to select all the vertices and merge them together because Tilt Brush doesn't actually merge the vertices, which is just something to keep in mind if you do decide to only work with Tilt Brush. But the problem isn't necessarily the vert count. It's more of how clean the actual geometry is. Because as we talked about before, we have all this space down here. And you have all the, the faces on the inside of these trees that we can't see. But it's most apparent when we switch to wireframe mode. So let's switch over. And we can see how clumped up all this detail is on the inside and down here on the ground. 
So here's our gravity sketch model. When we look down here, we can see our vert count is 6,358, which is about half of what it was in tilt brush. Uh, so it's a big improvement, but the biggest improvement is in the wireframe. So if I switch over now, we can just see how much easier this is to work with. We can go in and easily cut this up to create a UV map, and we can see that there's no hidden detail anywhere here. There's not a single face that's going unused here. In the future, I'll make a longer video on how I texture my gravity sketch objects. But for now, I want to show how powerful this clean geometry can really be. So we're going to do a quick automatic unwrap of the UV and bring it into Substance Painter to see what we can do. So to do this, I'm just going to go to UV editing and I'll select everything in my scene. I'll press tab and then A to select all my objects or my vertices and just go to UV, smart UV project and OK. So it just created a map of all the faces on our object and laid them flat out on a surface so we can project a texture onto these faces. We'll talk about this more in a future video, but in general, it's the same thing as taking a banana, peeling off the banana peel, and then laying that banana flat out on a table. And now we need to make sure that this object is only using one texture. So I'm going to go to the materials tab here and we can see all these different materials. So to edit this, I just need to combine all these objects first. So then we're going to go to object and then join, and now it's all one object. So now I can go in and delete all these materials and then make a new material, which we can just call tree material. Tree mat. I have my caps lock on for some reason. And now we're set to go. We have our UVs and we have one material assigned to this. And then I'll just say export, export, and FBX. So this is not a tutorial on how to use Substance Painter if you're new to Substance Painter. I'm just giving a little taste test of how we can take our gravity sketch models, bring them into Substance Painter, and make something that looks really solid within just a couple of minutes. So now we have this one layer for ambient occlusion, but we're going to create another layer. And this is going to be our fill layer. So I'll say multiply for the ambient occlusion. So it's gonna multiply onto our fill. And I say add fill and then red. And now we can see it affects the entire object. But now I can add a mask to specific objects in my scene. So I'll get rid of this view so we can only have our 3D view. But if I add this mask in with the black mask, I can go to this object selector tool and then right now it's only selecting faces, but I could select this entire tree top. And now we can paint just the top of the trees. And this is the entire process of painting your model. So here's our final result. So this is a tree that we designed in Tilt Brush, we brought into Gravity Sketch, we remodeled it, then brought into Blender, we cleaned it up, we did an automatic UV unwrap so we didn't have to even deal with the UVs, and then I brought it into Substance Painter to do a quick painting on top of it. The whole Substance Painter stuff took about 15 minutes total, and then we end up with a result like this. So in the future I'll make a longer video on how I did the actual texturing process, and we'll make it look a lot better than this because we'll do a more professional UV unwrap but I hope this gives you some ideas on how we can use Gravity Sketch. 